It's Sunny and Finn's Wrestling and Video Game Podcast. This week, we discuss the Nintendo Switch and give our predictions for WWE Hell in a Cell. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 36 of the Sunny and Finn Show. I'm Sunny, and with me, as always, Finn Steele. Hello. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Good. So, um, you were late again today? Me? Late? Nah. You are else. Else the world's thing. worst timekeeper. No, it's, I mean, you know, it's, oh, you say uh, about one o'clock, it was about one o'clock. It was like half one. It wasn't, it was like quarter past one. It was not quarter past one. It was, it was, it was one. It was one. It was one. It was one. No. It was about one. What's your excuse <laughs> today? Why, um, why are you, why are you rolling up late? I mean, I'm doing, I was watching Smackdown, I overslept because I couldn't get to bed until like two o'clock in the morning. Because I'm just like that, I guess. I'm a night owl. Um, I'm playing Batman in VR. That was cool. I'm Batman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. It's just not, you say about one. It was, it was, it was about one ish. That's all. Mm-hmm. Half past one. Same thing. There is no <laughs> excuse for poor timekeeping, Finn Steel. I mean, yes. No is. excuse at all. What are you, my boss? Um, yes. <laughs> okay. So next week, when we record this podcast, one o'clock. <laughs> and I will shame you again on the podcast. Shame. Shame. Uh, I'll, I'll be uh, about one next week. <laughs> no, one o'clock. <laughs> one o'clock ish. On podcast nights, uh-huh. you go to bed at nine o'clock. You don't really sleep at nine o'clock. And wait. You get up at a decent time, like I do, watch SmackDown, have some coffees, do your podcast notes, and then. You're looking at the clock, it's 10 to 1, you only live around the corner, you think, right, I can leave now. I can get to Sunny's for 1 o'clock and we can record our podcast at 1 o'clock right. and life will be good. Yeah. How do you feel about that? That'll happen, yeah, okay. No, it won't happen. It won't. <laughs> you'll, you'll probably be even later next week. Probably, but like 2 o'clock next week. <laughs> <laughs> I might like start saying, come here at 12. So yeah, that you're here at one, yeah. It's like, <laughs> Very good idea, yeah. And then, then I'll win. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pod, <laughs> Podcat is here again. Yay. Winter. She's been very well behaved. Oh. You've been well behaved. Yeah. <laughs> Loving the fuss. This is the Sunny and Finn Show. We are a weekly wrestling and video game podcast that posts every single Friday across podcast services everywhere. Let's start the show as we always do. Okay. We do have a lot to talk about today. We do. Um, but yeah. as always, what have you been playing? Uh, what I haven't been playing? I'm playing a lot of VR stuff. Okay. Um, I finished Wayward Sky. Got all the trophies in that. Um, in fact, I almost got screwed out with a trophy because uh, I missed a collector one on the very first level. Okay. And when I went to replay it, I couldn't progress past like the first thing. I couldn't, couldn't turn the valve. And it's like, there was like a bug. And I was like, I tweeted the developers and like, hey, does, I can't get past this. What's going on? It's like, oh, yeah, we know about that. We'll have a patch out later this week. And then, surely enough, the next day, they tweet me again saying, patch it out. And I was like, oh, cool. So I downloaded it, played through it, got my collectible, got the trophy, and yeah. Did you enjoy awesome. it? Yeah, it's good. Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. A lot of fun. Okay. Um, I got that trophy that we were talking about last week, the um, play fetch with the chicken. Oh, yeah. I, I did do it through the title screen. Oh, awesome. Cool. Yeah. I had a few head tracking issues. Um, oh, yeah. Over the last few days, actually. But all I had to do is I literally reset my PS4 mm. and everything's been fine since. So. All right. Okay. That's cool. good. What else have you been playing? I've been Batman VR. I've been that a lot. That's a super cool game. Uh, the ending is awesome. Um, it's super cool and it's the best application on the VR, I think, at the minute. Yeah. It's definitely the showcase. Like, if you were going to show... Like, I've been um, showing, showing VR off to a couple of people... And uh, that's definitely the one you want to show people. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's like when you're like, on the title screen, you're looking over the city, you're like leaning over the balcony, look down, it's like, whoa. Yeah. It feels like I'm actually on the balcony. Uh, it's super cool. It's crazy. Uh, I remember that Batman challenge you were having trouble with? Yeah. Second attempt. Second attempt? Yep. I am the Batman. Did um, <laughs> the, Riddler, the Riddler one took me a little bit longer. That you suck. Second time. But I think I did it first time, actually, the really? Riddler one. Yeah. All right. Weird. But the first one took me ages. <laughs> yeah. Ages and ages. And the one ended up like using both hands, like throwing back rings like crazy. <laughs> it's super awesome. And I didn't that, even think about that, actually. <laughs> yeah. I'm there like wearing out my left arm, <laughs> like continuously going to my utility belt to get batarangs out and throw them with these AR targets. Yeah. Yeah, uh, just do hand it. But in the end, I got pretty good at it and did it, so. Yeah. Awesome. Um, but yeah, I love the ending as well. I don't know. 
I have a question for you, actually. I don't know if you might know this, but uh, is the game like canon to the other games? Is Not this, really. No? no, I oh, mean, okay. I wouldn't... Um... I'd say... I wouldn't say so. No, they're not, so it's not setting up like another a future game, maybe. No, I think they're that's done. I think Rocksteady are done with the Arkham Arkhamverse oh, now. That's a shame. Um, but I mean, you know, they're, like, they're really like cliffhanger type of endings. Like, oh wow, so what's going on there? And it's like, no one cares. <laughs> you don't ever find out. Well, <laughs> you've not played Arkham Knight. Oh yeah, so I guess so they do. It's not the questions a bit. <laughs> Well, let's talk spoilers. We're, we're going to talk spoilers for Batman Arkham VR. If you haven't played it, don't listen for the next minute or so, okay? Yeah. <laughs> if you have intention to play it, of course. Yeah, give ahead. So, uh, in Arkham Knight, uh, the Joker's dead because um, he dies at the end of Batman Arkham City. Yeah. And Batman is poisoned with Joker blood. Oh, yeah. So, I think he's, like, hallucinating. Because if you... Uh, I don't know if you did the blood analysis thing on VR, on Arkham VR. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, on Batman's blood as well, yeah. 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 Um, so, I think he's... I don't know if he's hallucinating. Because, obviously, mm. at the end, when you see the Joker in the mirror... Yeah. Um, he's the killer. I don't think Nightwing is actually dead. I think it's, it's all, all in... Head. I think it's all in his head, but... Um, Interesting. Regardless, it's awesome. Yeah. It's super great. Um that part where Killer Croc comes out of the water is awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Another part where you're looking into the jail cell and see Joker, and you look back and turn around and you you're in the jail cell and it's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. That's super cool. It's done so well. See, yeah. like, that is what I, I want from like, the VR experience, like that yeah. sort of thing, because it's just, it's just mind-blowing, like how how well that game is made. I mean, I know it's only like a short experience, but um, it is just really well. It's made like a real game. Yeah, it is. But it's like a little bit longer. That, that would be like, uh, the what do they call it? The best app for VR. I think. I think it is the best app for VR. Yeah, I think at the is. minute. Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously, it can only get better over time. But I think at the minute, that is like the one you will show off to people. Like, oh, uh, can I try VR or whatever? And, you know, you show them that. Yeah. Because it's just so impressive. Like that all the way through. Technically, it's just so well done. Yeah, it's amazing. I love it. Um, what else? Playing Bioshock more. Slowly caught my way through that. Yeah, trying it. to get through it as well. Cool. Um, and then I think that's about it. Oh, and Sports Bar VR. Just playing pool with random people in the internet. Super cool. Yeah, Whatever. fair enough. Um, I bought uh, Sports Bar VR as well. Awesome. We're yet to play each other, but Me maybe too. we could do that later on. Yeah, we could do that. Um, yeah, it was so, it's so weird, <laughs> right? Because I put it on and like my first instinct was, right, I need to walk around the pool table to it's... take my shot. <laughs> yeah. But I obviously you need to sort of remain... Standing where you are. Yeah. You're bloody almost over trying to lean round. Oh, almost. Yeah. And it's like, it's like I'm poking the TV with move controllers and it's yeah, like... I'm doing it Batman. <laughs> okay. So what I need to do here is stand still. I don't need to move because obviously you use the controller to move around the table. Yeah. Well, this game can totally play sitting down if you use like Hulk mode. Just like click and drag it, drag yourself around. Oh, okay. Yeah. You that must have been what the dude was... Um, who I was playing because so I played a guy in California nice. and he started speaking to me over the headset I was like oh right okay I've, <laughs> I've, this is so weird because yeah. I'm standing here holding two move controllers like and then like, holding it in the stance where I'd be holding a pool cue <laughs> it's so weird Super and then like this guy in California is talking to me and like we're stood in this virtual bar around a pool table and it's like man this is like this is crazy I mean I know we can play games online but this is no, hold on, hold this on is level. something different. This is something else. This yeah. is it's so crazy. Like, but um, I think the game. Yeah, I mean, I could see every movement that he made. He was like, he, he said to me, he was good, he was good going to the fridge to get another beer. So I, you know, I saw him. That the move controllers come up and they lift his the headset off and he puts it on the table and then he picks them back up again. It's like I can see every movement that you make here. That's awesome. And it's like it's crazy, but it works really well too. Like the the online, there was no lag or any sort of problem and yeah. I think the pool works really well yeah it's really great um, is that the only one you can play online or can you play everything online you can play everything online yeah. oh you can yeah because um, I'd quite like to try Unihawk online I think that'd be pretty cool it works really Unihawk um, yeah. air hockey air hockey okay <laughs> um, I don't know why I called it Unihawk I think that is a, word, uh, a name for it as well but okay. uh, I, 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 there's a very good chance I've made that up but <laughs> um, yeah air hockey is really cool I've tried it but again it's getting used to not moving around the table and yeah, like being yeah. rooted to that spot where you the feet are on the thing. Yeah, it's dead what you have around. <laughs> yeah, but it's very cool. I like it a lot. Yeah, same here. Very impressed. We will have to play it together. Maybe yeah. we could do that. Maybe if PSN's working, maybe we could depart after the podcast. And can we can we stream us playing sports bar? Should be able to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we could do that. Okay. All right, we'll try that. We'll see we'll how it works. We'll try. Um, so I've played that. Um, darts is hard, by the way. I think that's really yeah. hard. Really hard. Yeah, you have to learn trigger, hold the left trigger on the, and then throwing it. 
Yeah, but uh, I, th- I think, again, I was having a few head tracking issues, so yeah. um, I think that might have been part of the problem. Plus, I was trying to play sitting down. Yeah, that's right. Um, but yeah, I started on the first because I didn't know about the left trigger thing. Locking in place, I was like throwing darts at the thing, missing completely. Yeah. Like, how did you get a bullseye in this? It's like, yeah, like, it is bloody hard. <laughs> uh, I hope they add more stuff to it. I'd like, uh, I tweeted them um, to say like oh, yeah. how good the game was, and they got back saying, thanks for playing. Uh, this is on our podcast account, and um, I put uh, table tennis, please. And they favoured it. So hopefully, I mean, cause it's on the on the like the app. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Square thing. I don't even know what it's called. That's flash screen. I think it's called. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Table tennis is on there, but there's no table tennis on the game. Yeah. There's also a game in a trailer that isn't in the game as well. I'm not sure what it is, but it's like some table thing. Oh. And uh, screwball is bloody hard. Well, it's, oh, nice. Yeah. I keep throwing the ball like miles up in the air. <laughs> yeah, it isn't getting used to. Just got to be gentle with it. Yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm like powering it and it's like just <laughs> flying all over the place. I'm like, what am I doing here? What am I doing wrong? But um, <laughs> no, it's sense. a really good game. I mean, what I love about VR as well, I know we've talked about it a lot on the podcast, but it, it's still a very relevant thing, oh, yeah. um, is how cheap the games are. Because I mean, these these games are, are, are so worth the £15 or whatever you pay for oh, yeah. them. For sure, yeah. I mean, like Sports Bar VR was fourteen ninety nine, dollars mm-hmm. And I had five games of pool with a guy in California. <laughs> yeah. And it's like... It's, for those sort of experiences, it's worth the price alone. Definitely, yeah. And like, it just is. It's just awesome. Um, yes, yeah, so I've been playing that. I've uh, been playing Headmaster a lot. I'm nearly finished it, I think. Cool. I bought Headmaster. I haven't played it yet. Points. It's getting it's getting hard now. Yeah. Yeah, it's getting very difficult. But um, I'm enjoying that uh, a great deal. Um, I played Tumble, which I like. Yeah. Really good. Awesome. Um, I'd like quite like to get that somewhere down the line. I've got cramp. Yeah, same. <laughs> you guys got cramp. Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, cramp. Oh, yeah. Ow. Yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, <clears throat> what else have we play? Oh, um, I played through Arkham Asylum, so I've done it. That's oh, sweet. Um, so I'm going to start Arkham City. I've done about seventy three percent of Arkham Asylum. Nice. Um, well, as far as Riddler trophies and um, the Arkham Chronicle thing goes, so yeah. I'm going to go back and I'm going to try and platinum it. But the combo challenges are so crap and hard. Yeah, it's so difficult. I remember I actually presented it on. Um, uh, 360. Yeah. And yeah, that took me a long, long time to perfect those the combat challenges. Yeah, so that's the, that's the only thing that's going to, that's standing really between me and the Platinum because yeah. I've got Riddler maps for every location so I could just go around and get the trophies. Cool. Um, but yeah, I, I really loved my, my playthrough of Arkham Asylum again. Yeah, I'll play that again at some point. It's, um, you can borrow my copy. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, I just really enjoyed it. I've seen like some of the reviews saying, "Ah, oh, the the brighter graphics because of the Unreal Four engine make it not as an enjoyable experience." I think that's nonsense. I, I yeah. really loved it. I thought yeah. it looked great. I thought it ran great. Um, I experienced zero problems with it at all. No bugs, no glitches, nothing. I just really enjoyed the game again. Yeah, great story as well. Yeah, great story. So I'm yeah. looking forward to diving back into Arkham City. You know, I might uh, start that tomorrow or something. But awesome. yeah, I'm excited. Um, I've started episode three of the Telltale Batman series. Right. Oh, yeah. um, played that a bit before you came over, but um, that's pretty much it, apart from FIFA and WWE, really. Cool. Oh, yeah, I played some W2K17 as well. Yeah. Are you still enjoying it? Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. It is just fine, isn't it? It's, uh, it's not. It's more fun playing with other people. Like it is, yeah. Like on the stream a few Yeah, like when, when, <laughs> we play, when we play sort of together, it's it's. I, I enjoy it more. Yeah, same. When you're playing on the own, just kind of facing the same AI every time. It's like a yeah. better but. Oh, it's fun. It is fun, yeah. Um, I, I know they're patching it. They tweeted out that there was a, a they've submitted a patch to oh, yeah. Sony and Microsoft. Um, I don't know when it's coming, but um, it's coming. I don't know what it does either. They're going to release patch notes when it comes out. But right. speaking of patches, actually, I have tried uh, the Division since it's had its one point four update. Cool. How is it? <laughs> well, I've, I'll put <laughs> it this way: <laughs> I, I've deleted it from Alongside. my hard drive. <laughs> Oh yeah, not so uh, that's how much I enjoyed my experience with the Division One Point Four. Not great then. Um, no, not really. I th- the problem I have, I mean, there's there's three tiers now in the world. Yeah. So if you want a hard experience, you pick tier three. You want a nor- medium experience, you want you pick tier two. But I, I so it, it automatically throws you into tier one. Mm-hmm. But I have to be honest, I didn't really notice any difference. Oh. <laughs> um, that's good then. Yeah, I, I just didn't. I don't find it enjoyable. It's yeah. not a fun game. Like I've, I'm obviously, I'm, you know, at the end game, and I just don't, 
I don't get any satisfaction out of playing it. Like I put Destiny on earlier on. I was playing Rise of Iron, and I love playing Destiny. Yeah. And it's up- updated. It's relevant. It's got you know it's got Halloween stuff on there at the minute, which is pretty cool and awesome. it's pretty fun. Yeah. But um, yeah, the division is a mile behind. In fact, it's miles behind. It's not just a mile. It's miles behind. Yeah. Destiny in every way. I kind of feel like Ubisoft again desperate with it now. It's like, oh, we'll add tears and all this stuff and change this and change that. Yeah. This, maybe that will work. Maybe that will get people excited. But it's like, it's, no. It's I mean, yes. Ubisoft. Yes, it is a game-changing patch, but um, it's. I think the game is on its last legs now. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised. Wouldn't be surprised with like free to play in a few weeks or a few months. Rather. The the longevity that Destiny has. I mean, I think people, if you know, Destiny Two never comes out, I still think people would play Destiny. Oh yeah, probably. Because, but the division <laughs> has not got that longevity at all. It's done. Yeah, I mean, Destiny as a game is way better than like the division. It's like just just the gameplay of it, like the shooting. I don't know the way it feels is better than um, the shooting, the world, the um, the vision, mm. everything about it is just. There's you can tell that a lot of thought has gone into it and keeps going into it because of the you know the DLC that keeps coming out for it. Like every all the DLC is different. Yeah, yeah. Like, so this, the Rise of Iron DLC takes part on Earth, but like in a different part of Earth. So you're not sort of, you know, wandering around old, you are, you are still in old Russia, but it's a different part of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they've created a whole new, um, like world for you to play around in. Like, there's a new tower and all this sort of stuff. And awesome. the division sucks. I'm, <laughs> I'm done with it. I, I yeah. am done with it. I bought the season pass, but I have no interest in it now. Fair play. You're done. Yeah. Yep, I I was done like after a couple of months after playing it the first time. Yeah, even if that <laughs> maybe one month. Yeah, I, I mean I had such high hopes for it. Like, yeah, I loved same. my forty, fifty hours or whatever I've played of it. Yeah. Um, and I really enjoyed that experience, but it's fun up until you get to the end game. And yeah, that's it. Yeah. Off, and it's like, oh, yeah, it's really for like <laughs> the hooks are in you until the end game. And then you're like, well, what am I playing for now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like whereas Destiny, you're always. There's always something to do. Yeah, there's always something to work towards. Like, you have to get a harder raids or, like, better gear or upgrading this and all that. Yeah. Yeah. You go for the legendary guns and all that. Yeah. So, Ubisoft, if you are going to do a Division 2, um, do it you're better. You're going <laughs> to need to do it much better. Yeah. yeah. Make it good, please. Take a leaf from Destiny. Yeah, definitely. And Destiny, keep being awesome. Yep. Because Sunny loves you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get back into you when Destiny 2 comes out. Fair enough. <laughs> I feel like I've been gone for too long to get back into Destiny now. I don't think there's such a thing because it doesn't yeah. like I know I've said it before but unlike The Division which really alienated people that have left it alone for a while after the end game yeah. or when they got to the end game like Destiny hasn't like I've cause I've got it on PS4 and I've got it on Xbox One nice. but when uh, I bought it on Xbox One when it was packaged with The Taken King oh yeah um, and obviously I'd started afresh because I was playing it on PS4 before mm. but um, no I didn't feel left behind it, it doesn't it, it doesn't sort of throw you in the deep end like that. You, the enemies are at your level. Yeah. Like with the division, the enemies were so far advanced, like gear wise. Oh, right. Yeah. It was it's, ridiculous. It's like they were yeah. just blowing you away. Yeah. Um, but with Destiny, I think, uh, I don't think there's uh, a too late to get back into it. Hmm. Interesting. Especially with all the DLC and stuff that's come out. Yeah. Because uh, when you buy um, the Taken King, I don't know if you play the Taken King or not. I don't think so. Um, it, if you're not at that level, it gives you a token to get to that level. All oh, right. And same with Rise of Iron. You need to be um, level 40 or whatever it is and a certain light level. But right. if you buy the Rise of Iron and you're not there, if you go to the mailman, you'll uh, you'll have a token there and gear to get you to that level so you can play it. All right. Nice. So it's not left you behind. It's uh, It brings you up to speed, if anything. Cool. Well, maybe I'll give it a try. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> um. Not really a lot of gaming news this week. It's been a, a recurring theme throughout <laughs> September and October. Pretty much. One major thing. But Yes. Uh, apart from that one major thing that was announced literally a day after we recorded our podcast last week. So, yeah, Nintendo, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> um, of course, we are talking about the elusive Nintendo NX, yeah. which has now been revealed as the Nintendo Switch. Woo. Um, <clears throat> Finally. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It was revealed last Thursday with a... Uh, with a lengthy trailer, lengthy yeah. three-minute trailer. Um, what did you think to it? Um, I like it. It makes sense. Uh, Nintendo are really the only people left in the handheld gaming uh, space. Sony still got a Vita, but they've kind of dropped all support for that at this point. Uh, still some games coming out for it, but Sony wouldn't let you know. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's so yeah. Nintendo haven't been doing so well with the Wii U, uh, like home console stuff. 
So it makes sense to like hybrid the two together and make a one that's like both. You can take it's a home console that you can take with you. Um, I don't know if it'll be as powerful as PS4 and Xbox One. Probably not. Um, but I don't think it really needs to be. I think yeah. Um, I think it's gimmick is strong that people want to play it. It's a real shame about the Wii U because we are Wii U fans here yeah, on uh, the Sunny and Finn show. Um, and, you know, that's obviously not as powerful as the Xbox One or the PS4. Mm. But, like, when you play games like Mario Kart or Mario Maker or, or sort of any of those sort of first party Nintendo games, they are gorgeous looking games. Yeah. And they don't look out of place at all. No, no. They don't look like, uh, like, they don't look like old games. They look like brand new, shiny games. And they're. So I don't think it necessarily... I mean, the, the Sony and Microsoft are, are well ahead as far as sort of power goes. Obviously, Microsoft right. have got uh, the Scorpio coming out next year, mm-hmm. uh, which apparently is well on track, according to bosses at Xbox, from what I've been reading. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, well, take that. their word for it. They seem to be fairly efficient, so whatever. Um, but this... This looks really cool. I saw... I did, cause we didn't know what it was going to be. We had... I mean, they released literally nothing. Yeah, like they they, they they gave us nothing at all. They're just like, well, here's how the controllers work. You can take them off and use it like this on so split screen. Have one person have one controller, one person the other. But yeah, other than that, it's no it nothing to do with what games coming out for it. I know. I meant before that. Like, well, obviously the the NX oh, idea has yeah. been floating around for a long oh, time, has, but yeah. no one knew what it was. Yeah, and now it's going around, but nothing. Yeah, but concrete. and then you know they all of a sudden there's this creepy picture of Mario peeking behind a curtain. Oh yeah, <laughs> like he's watching you do something you shouldn't be doing. <laughs> <laughs> Mario, please. Yeah. <laughs> hmm, what are you doing? <laughs> to me. Mario. <laughs> Jesus Mario, no not now. <laughs> um But yeah, I like the trailer a lot. I think it's pretty cool that I like that it's a, a handheld and home console hybrid. Yeah. So and I like the console design in the sense that you can take it with you and prop the tablet up. Mm. And then the that's two like the, the controllers thing. split in two, and you can all play. Yeah, yeah, I think that's awesome. That's very cool. It showed a guy playing like Skyrim on the plane, uh, with like sitting up and him holding the controller just like a normal controller. Yeah, um, but yeah, I think it's cool. I like it. Uh, I think it's a very cool design. I have pre-ordered yeah. one already. There's no pricing or specs or I mean, I don't care about specs anyway. Because I think it's going to be awesome. You but... go straight towards a high tornado. Yeah, it's like bullet train to the train to the tornado. But as soon as I saw <laughs> it, I was like, right, I want that. Yeah. Like, it looks so cool. That's but I don't, I don't want it for third-party games. I'll play third-party games on PS4 and Xbox One. Yeah. Um, but you want that next new Mario, the new Zelda and all that. Yeah, I want, I want to play Mario Kart. Yeah. I mean, the ga- the, I mean, the console itself comes out in March. So if there's a Mario Kart coming at launch, uh, my I imagine it's uh, the Wii U version of Mario Kart bundled with all of its DLC. That'd be nice. Um, for NX or Switch. Yeah, <laughs> moment to call it Swiss now. Um, and I think Splatoon will be the same sort of deal. I think yeah. it'll, if because obviously Splatoon and Mario Kart were featured quite heavily on the trailer for it, so I imagine it's going to be the Wii U versions of those games, but um, packaged with all of their DLC and used as launch titles for the Switch. That'd be cool. I'd like to play Splatoon. I never got a chance to play it on the Wii U, so that'd be cool for me to get a chance to play it finally. Yeah, I feel like we've missed um, the boat with that a little bit, but. Yeah. Um, I liked that they were pushing it quite heavily on the trailer. Yeah, yeah. So it shows that they have faith in that franchise. And yeah, it, it looks really cool, and a lot of people speak very highly of it. So um, yeah. there's a lot of very cool um, Nintendo franchises that are worth owning a Nintendo console for. Definitely, yeah. I haven't bought it yet. I probably will get it, end up getting it day one, just because of Zelda. Um, I could play on the Wii U, I guess, but I don't know. I want the new fancy controller. Yeah, of course, yeah. Or new fancy uh, system. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, I'll probably never take it out of the house unless I mean I have to go somewhere where I'm going to be either on my own doing, you know. It looks like it's going to be very easy to take around with you. Yeah, um, I'd be afraid of getting stolen. Well, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. I have out in public, just sitting on like, like in an airplane, no, no, not an airplane, but on like a bench or something, and someone's walks up to you like, yoink, <laughs> it's mine. I'm like, oh wait, <laughs> it's mine. Well, how weak are you? <laughs> Extremely. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're gonna you're not gonna chase this mugger down and uh Um well no you might be stronger than me. <laughs> oh, okay, fair <laughs> I'm, enough. I'm like a knife for something. Carry a knife. No. Move to America and buy a gun. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> um but yeah, I mean I, I mean I, I may not ever use it for you know what they're I mean somebody said to me they may not buy it because they wouldn't use it for its primary function. Its yeah. primary function is playing games. Yeah. 
And it's a, it's a console, first and foremost. It's one that you have the option to take with you should you want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. you don't have to. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, like you, I'll want to play Zelda. Mm-hmm. Um, Mario. Because, I mean, they showed a Mario on there. I don't know what it was. Oh, yeah. And it's an, yeah, an announced Mario game. They're very coy, aren't they, Nintendo? It's very, yeah. <laughs> they're so t- they tell you nothing. Look at this Mario game for two seconds. Ooh, what was that? Ooh, yeah, and here's that? Skyrim, but we're not going to confirm that Skyrim is coming to the it's, Switch. Yeah. We're just going to make you guess that it is. <laughs> it might be coming. Ooh. I mean, they, they released um, a list of partners. I don't know if you saw it. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, on quite, a, quite a decent list, Bethesda being one of them. Yeah. So you would imagine that Skyrim remaster is coming to the Switch, even <laughs> though they so. refuse to confirm it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a decent list of... Um, Partners there. Yeah, From Software, wasn't there? Dark Souls 3, maybe on there. Noticeable absentee was EA. Oh, yeah. Mm. I didn't see it on there anyway. I may have been blind, but I thought it would be quite prominent if it was there. Yeah. Strange. Yeah. But yeah, who cares? Well, well that's true. I, I mean, it, no, it's NBA, it's NBA 2K, wasn't it? Not EA. Never mind. Yeah, it was <laughs> NBA, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 2K, rather. Yeah, not yeah. the crap EA Sports one, which is, is really terrible. Is it, uh, I don't know if there is an NBA Live 17. If there is, there shouldn't be. Yeah, I, don't think, I think they might have to scrap this year. Good. It wouldn't surprise me. The, the, there's, they, they will never be able to compete with the 2K series. Yeah, never. Yeah, it's that why ain't bother. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Why bother? It'd be like somebody else bringing out a um, another wrestling game. Yeah. Like... I like that, actually. I like a different take on wrestling. As would I. Yeah. But not everyone shares that view. Like, the, for a casual fan, like, you know, because we're hardcore wrestling fans, we'll be jumping on that bandwagon straight away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, like, hardcore, like, casual people who just watch WWE will be like, well, I've got this. What, what yeah, the hell true. is this? Yeah. So that's why, I mean, the fact that it's not maintained and not pushed or promoted, that's why Five Star Wrestling probably hasn't done that well. Yeah. That's a shame. It is a shame. But... Yeah, I mean, um, going back to the Switch, I'm I'm really intrigued. It's uh, Nintendo don't want to do things in a bog standard way. Like they don't want to follow, they don't want to conform to bringing out a powerful console with two controllers and uh, games. Yeah, like disc based games. I mean, they're going to be cartridges as well. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Um, what I'm also excited for is like the next like Pokemon game after Sun and Moon, because like there's not going to be a 3ds. Well, I guess it's still have the 3ds, but. Maybe the next Pokemon game will be on the big powerful system. That'd be cool. That's what I've ever wanted. That'd be really five. cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd be really cool. Especially uh, if this is going to be the next generation of their handhelds as well. Yeah. I mean, surely it must be. Surely. You would think so if they're pushing it so hard. Yeah. Good 3DS has been out for a long, long time now. I don't think they're going to update that anymore. So, hmm. Mm. And since it's portable anyway, so you've got that with the home console. There is a ton of unanswered questions and it doesn't so look many. like we're going to sort of get more information this year. Yeah. I think Nintendo have said sort of January at the earliest we're going to sort of know about games, pricing and all that sort of stuff. Going to get close, Nintendo. <clears throat> but, um, I mean, the, the console launches in March, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. January's cutting it fine. Very fine. But um, I'm excited for it. I mean, it's it's, it's something different. Um, it'll be completely different to PS4 and Xbox One. Mm-hmm. And, Which yeah. is a good thing, because... If they had just announced like another new powerful console, it would just be another PS4 or Xbox One. Yeah, you're to right. Compete yeah. with you know that market. But the Nintendo's going a completely different market, completely different direction. It makes sense. It's what they've been doing since the Wii, and yeah, it's welcome so far with the Wii. Anyway, uh, I think they've been doing it for a long time. I think they've been doing it since the 64. That's true. I mean, with the the, the you know the weird controller and the fact that they used cartridges when PlayStation was. You know, and I don't want to the Dreamcast and the Saturn, you know, and all that sort. Of, they were disc based. Yeah. Um, right. Nintendo brought the cartridges back, um, or during that sort of disc based period. Mm-hmm. Then you know the GameCube came out and <laughs> there was tiny discs, tiny discs <laughs> and a, a very noisy, different looking it's, control pad. Yeah, yeah. Um, then the Wii, of course, which was the first sort of motion controls in games. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wii U where you've got a tablet so that, you know, they're not doing things as standard. That's like, uh, you know, Microsoft and Sony, they're, you know, very similar. Yeah, yeah. You know, in the sense that it's HDMI 1080p gaming with, you know, just the only difference is, is they have different exclusives. Exactly, yeah. Pretty much. It's just... Like so, I think it's nice to have that Nintendo alternative. Yeah. And uh, I'm excited for it, of course. You I do. mean, it's not coming until next year, but next year actually isn't that far away it's not a value well. so um, <laughs> where's this year gone blimey yeah obviously when, when more news comes out we'll have more news and we'll talk about it more yep. and when it comes out we'll be on it straight away and yep, yep. bringing you some 
new console footage stuff. Yeah, new content stuff. Yeah. <laughs> sound, like, sound like a Callisto uh, doing that lucha thing. That was incredible. <laughs> but I stay, he's, where is he? Uh, in fact, he's not been seen he's, since then. Pretty much, yeah. He's kind of gone into hiding. <laughs> <laughs> I think they've put him into hiding. I think it's <laughs> like... Much. So what do you think about uh, being on SmackDown? Uh, yeah, Baron Corbin something fight Luch- luchas oh. <laughs> yeah woo <laughs> damn it yeah <laughs> yeah I, I, I hate my life <laughs> what can he say uh, yeah oh dear but yeah what we're here doing our podcast thing and our YouTube thing yep <laughs> um, we will be putting out more content as well we've been um, pretty slack recently I think yeah we used to be more, more streams more like let's plays and things. I want to start doing let's plays again. You know, just me doing it. Um, yeah, um, we'll definitely start doing more let's plays. I mean, um, we actually record the podcast sort of mid afternoon at the minute. Mm-hmm. So, sort of, if we were to stream straight after this, there'd be no one there to see it. Pretty much. But in a couple of weeks' time, uh, everything should be back to normal, and we'll record at night again, and then we'll stream at night, and uh, we'll hopefully have more of a consistent flow of content coming at that point. Yeah, going forward. Um, blame me. It's fine. <laughs> um, Let's move on to the wrestling side of things. Okay, thank you. So, before we sort of start talking about WWE and Hell in a Cell and all that sort of stuff, there was an announcement this week. I mean, there was some rumbling sort of earlier on, like early this week, that um, there was an announcement coming that was going to change the you know lives of wrestlers, uh, wrestling fans, and promotions. Yes, interesting. Okay, so... Um, there's been rumours for a little while that WWE was sort of going to work like a uh, a tier system. Um, at least they, they put a survey out seeing if that's something that people would be interested in, you know, featuring content from indies and Niro H and that sort of thing. Um, it turns out this announcement was nothing to do with WWE yeah. or, or the WWE Network. But Flow Sports, who bring you, who like a, a video on demand service that bring you sports that um, usually wouldn't be watchable on mainstream television like WWE for example like the NBA and all that sort of thing that you wouldn't usually get Hmm. Um, they've struck a deal with uh, WWN and uh, who uh, run uh, own the rights to Evolve and Shine and Full Impact Pro I think is the name of the the, the wrestling league yeah I think that's right Um, to stream on a new video on demand service dedicated to independent wrestling called Flow Slam. Awesome. What's interesting about this um, is WWE have invested into WWN. Yeah. Hence why you sort of do see some WWE involvement in Evolve every now and then. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, recently Sammy was at Evolve and oh, yeah. there were some different things going on. Awesome. Um, but this is really cool, I think. If they got, you know, more companies involved in this more independent companies involved i think this could be a real game changer because obviously i mean wwe network is 9.99 you you get what you get it's a ton of content wwe yeah. wise uh there's new japan world which you can pay for and you can get all the new japan stuff uh, in english as well i think nice but this is 20 dollars um that equates to about 14 pounds here at the minute um i don't personally think it's worth paying that money for yeah, because that on top of WWE Network kind of adds up, doesn't it? It does. I mean, if you pay for New Japan World as well, which people yeah. do, people want all of that content, and that's great, and that's fine. But you know, it's a it's a lot of money. So I mean, they need to. I mean, it starts really soon. So this month it starts. No, next month in November. Yeah, it starts with the Shine pay per view, and then um, it starts with then there's two Evolve pay per views as well. So if you're into that, and if you're into watching independent wrestling, and you know, you're scouring the internet for streams and all this sort of stuff, you know, or you're watching on I- IPPV or whatever. Um, you know, all of the content is going to be there in one place now. Yeah, that's good. Which is very cool. Very I think, cool. I, and I think to a degree it is a game changer because it gives that platform to companies whose content isn't that easy to access. Yeah, definitely. Um, because otherwise you'll, you'll have to go to like uh, this website or that website or this streaming service to find the specific, uh, you know, companies' wrestling promotions wrestling events uh, but now you can just go to one place and it's all there much better I think yeah and they're rolling apps out as well so there's an app for uh, Apple TV and uh, Roku um, I saw a tweet from Flow, Flow Slam just the other day I think maybe yesterday 
um, saying that we're sort of looking at Xbox One and PS4 apps. Awesome. So I imagine that'll roll out to Amazon Fire Sticks and all this sort of stuff as well. So um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely something that's going to be worth looking into mm-hmm. um, in the future. Um, it's something I might check out for a month or so anyway, just to see how it runs, uh, what it's, what the coverage is like. Uh, I know that Joey Styles is right. um, on board with this. Nice. So he's going to be sort of, I imagine, doing some commentary or some backstage interview stuff. Cool. So there's a there's a lot of pluses for this. Um, and I think it's it's going to be something that's going to be big going forward, for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. You've got to get a free month. To do such a I don't think you do. No? No, I don't no. think you do. I've had a look at the Flow Sports website, but I don't think there's a free month. No, oh, fair enough. We've got um, but I mean, Evolve pay per views are like fifteen dollars anyway. Yeah. So uh, like that's per one. Oh, so if you can okay. pay, I mean, you can pay twenty dollars a month or one hundred and fifty dollars for the year. I see. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but if you pay, so yeah, that's kind of like a WWE network kind of thing. It's like you can either pay that crazy amount every month or every year or whatever, or you can pay the smaller amount and get everything. Altogether. If this is the content that you want, like like with New Japan World, I don't pay for New Japan World. I don't watch New Japan Pro Wrestling. Mm. Um. But, you know, if you want that content, it's now going to be there in one place instead. Yeah. And it's it's a big deal, I think, because, I mean, the content's going to be archived and stuff like that as well. So you'll be able to go back and watch, um, you know, previous shows once they've been streamed and stuff like that. So um, it is it is going to be a big deal. And I'm sure it's something that's going to grow over time. Uh, but this is a really interesting time for, to be a pro wrestling fan, I think. Yeah, I think so. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited for the future of pro wrestling too. Yeah. But, um, Good stuff. Yeah, we'll check out Flow Slam and uh, we'll keep you up to date. See what see what uh, see what the situation is. Yeah, okay. Let's move on to WWE. Okay, <clears throat> we were going to talk about Raw like we always do, mm-hmm. but Raw was not good this week. Pretty garbage, yeah. Yeah, um, and we predicted yeah. this last week. We were like, well, what what's left to talk? What's left to do? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. We got it. Um, so what we're going to do? We're going to talk about Hell in a Cell. We're going to run down the matches of Hell in a Cell and we can sort of fit our raw coverage in with that. Yeah. Bye, Podcat. Bye, Podcat. <laughs> she's, going, she's fed up of hearing about wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, so she, maybe she's not it. seen Raw. She doesn't <laughs> want Raw spoilers. Exactly, yeah. I don't see. Don't know who wins. I think that's what it is. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to give our predictions for Hell in a Cell and we'll, like I said, we'll shoehorn, shoehorn our raw coverage into that. Sounds good. Okay. Right. So, uh, Mr. Steele, if you want to do the honours and uh, run the card down, and we'll uh, we'll talk about the rivalries and what sort of happened and how it's built up and all that sort of stuff. Cool. That's good. So, it's in no particular order, as usual, because we don't put their match in order on the, re- on the website. Or nope. We have to guess. We have to guess. <laughs> so, the first one I've got on here is uh, Enzo and Cass versus Gallows and Anderson, for no particular reason. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if able to title, but it's like, no, it's not. It's, it's really not, no. <laughs> yeah. It should be. Yeah. Maybe. The, the club should be the champions right now. They should be. They're, they're not. Yeah. So this these are two teams that WWE quite clearly don't know how to handle at the minute. Pretty much. Um we talked about this before, like Enzo and Cass, since they moved up to the main roster, they've not really done anything of worth. Obviously oh, really? they've sold a ton of t shirts and uh, made the crowd sing along with their catchphrases every single week. But yeah. in the ring, the only real thing that they've done or at least one of them has done, was when Big Cass was in the main event of Raw in that fatal four-way match for the Universal Championship, yep. um, in which he put a good showing in. Um, the club have been mismanaged, I think. Yeah, seriously. One minute they're a comedy tag team, next minute they're tough badasses, and they don't know what, what to do with them right now, I don't think. No. and the, Both teams are really just stuck in limbo, which yeah. shouldn't be the case, but WWE has this thing where if people are stuck in limbo, they'll just put them together for the sake of giving them something to do. And that's yeah. basically what the case is with this. Now, the last couple of weeks on Raw, Carl uh, Anderson has been in singles matches. Yes. Last week, he lost to Big Cass. And this week, incredibly, he lost to Enzo. Yeah. With some help from Big Cass, to be fair. Yeah. But still, that shouldn't be happening. Um, all, all it was was a big boot, though. Yeah. A big boot to Carl Anderson. Enzo gets the one, two, three. Yes, um, poor Carl. What do you make of all this? Um, yeah, like you, I think it's like a matter of they didn't know what to do with them, so just stick them together. Um, I think Carl Anderson deserves way better. He's like a big, big star in Japan, and now it's getting jobbed out to enter and gas every week. Not good. Um, but hopefully, whoever wins this, which should be the club, um, will go on to face whoever's the champion. It's probably be New Day still. Um, hopefully, maybe. I don't know. 
but it's kind of a nothing feud and I don't really care that much about it <laughs> well that's the thing it's like when, when it when it sort of happens on Raw I'm looking at my iPad scanning through Twitter and stuff yeah. like that and just thinking I don't care I, to be honest I did that for most of Raw this week I even skipped a lot of it but yeah, um, but they uh, interrupted Enzo and Cass's en- intro which I thought was good then they kind of did it anyway without the microphones. I was like, oh, okay. Because mm. like, I cut off the microphones. Ah, like, oh, now no, you can't do it. But then they did it anyway and the crowd sang along. It's like, ah, oh, tired this now. <laughs> <laughs> who do you think is going to win on Sunday? Um, who I want to win and who I think are going to win are two different people. Ah. Um, I think Joe and Cass are going to win. But I want, I want Gallows and Anderson to win. Um, I think Gallows and Anderson will win. Okay. Before, I mean, before this start was like sort of kicking off, they were you know, destroying a few teams and starting to look like the team they should do. Yeah, yeah. Because they were like, playtime's over and all this sort of stuff and wanted to, you know, really sort of establish themselves as a, a kick-ass tag team again. And then, you know, the last couple of weeks just took a really big nosedive. <laughs> yes, and because yes. they've took the fall the last couple of weeks, I think they're going to win on Sunday. Okay. I hope you're right. Um, I also hope I'm right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, what next? Um... We'll go with uh, TJ Perkins versus the Brian Kendrick. Well, they've kind of dropped the V now, haven't they? So, just Brian Kendrick. This is a few that I've really enjoyed. Me too. I thought it was great this week and more. Mm. Um, it's like begging TJ Perkins to let him win yeah. because he's desperate and he's like, he needs <clears> this. So I thought that was very cool. Good character development uh, in WWE. What? That's yeah, I know. Surprising. <laughs> yeah. It's really surprising. Yeah. Um, speaking of character development, I think TJ Perkins' character has sort of um, come along tenfold yeah. as well agreed yeah because um, you don't serious. really talk much in the Cruiserweight Classic obviously it was tournament based so yeah, not yeah. really much of that apart from the pre-match interviews um, but he's, his mic work has come along yeah yeah and uh, I've been very impressed with how he's sort of handled himself in the backstage segments and all that sort of thing as well mm. um, sounded, very, he's, sounded very confident on commentary this week as well I thought yes yeah and I, I've just enjoyed the way that this feud has been given a lot of time to develop and um, given time to breathe on Raw. So, it's, you know, it's been, you know, two or three segments each week on Raw since this feud started. Yeah. Um, and it's it's good to see it. The crowd aren't that into it. Uh, yeah, the crowd's garbage again this week. I don't know what they're doing. But, um, Why comes I, wrestling event? Are we gonna the, wrestling? These guys can only do so much. The crowd have got to reciprocate in some way. And yeah. then they're not. And that's that's a big problem for me in WWE right now, and especially with the cruiserweights, because the cruiserweights are, are really doing some great work. Yeah, and I'm willing them on every week, and I, you know I want the crowd to really get into it. Yeah. You know, there's a few oohs and ahs when you know Rich Swan does somersaults and all this sort of stuff. And yeah, but Ken- Kendrick and Swan was the best match of the night on Raw by far. Yeah, it was. And yeah, the crowd just didn't care. I was like, yeah, why? Why, why, Again, you, why do you even come to the event if he's gonna? Apart from a, a, aside from a few oohs and ahs. Yeah, exactly. It's like um, somebody I, I put about the crowd being disrespectful on Twitter on our on the Sunny and Finn Twitter feed. Yeah. Uh, and some guy who was in attendance but like came back to us. He'd obviously been scouring the internet for <laughs> tweets about the crowd being disrespectful, chanting boring, all this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and he was like, well, we pay our, we, we've paid our money to Vince. We want to tell him about what we think of the product. Yeah, and it's like, but, well, I'm not begrudging you the freedom of speech, but what you need to be mindful of is if you like some of these guys, like, uh, for example, during the that arms, arm wrestling segment okay. with Bailey, um, like the crowd were the booing and chanting boring. It's like, yeah, this isn't great. And arm wrestling segments don't really work that well. But if you boo, that's a sign and chant boring. That's potentially a sign to the powers that be that maybe people don't want to see Bailey. Yeah, exactly. And like- don't want to see these women do these things every week. And it's the same with the cruiserweights. You chant boring during their matches, even though they're not. Mm. Like, it's like, well, do, do the crowd actually want to see these cruiserweights? And they're going to get relegated to main event or yeah, yeah. superstars or whatever. And that's so, you know go and be vocal have a good time at the wrestling and and you know just enjoy yourselves but just you you have to show the performers a certain amount of respect yeah seriously it's like they're they sound trap boring at uh the cruiser baits, but then they cheer brock lesnar who literally just stands there and doing nothing just yeah. doing the whole night so i mean what, what it's like doing? it's like boring is the new cm punk yeah pretty much like mm. it's sending a completely wrong message to the powers that be and it's like we're only going to get more Brock Lesnar and less Cruiserweights if you carry on this. So like, yeah, so you, stop. although you think you're doing right by chanting boring, yeah. by sending a message to uh, the powers that be, what you're really doing is 
you know, throwing the performers off and making them wonder, I guess, what they're doing wrong. Mm. And, you know, you're, you could be jeopardizing their TV time going forward. So, you know, it's again, the freedom of speech is yours, but you have to show, um, a degree of respect. Yeah, I agree. So going back to the cruiserweights and TJ Perkins versus Brian Kendrick, mm-hmm. it's a difficult one to call because at the minute I, I don't feel like they can take the belt from TJ. Okay. But there's part of me thinking that they might. Mm-hmm. I mean, Kendrick lost clean to Rich Swan this week. It is. In an excellent match. Great match. Um, but I don't think they... Because TJ, TJP can be the, is the face of that division. Yeah. Good talker. Good looking chap. Um, relevant as far as sort of... He's hitting that gaming audience yep. as well as sort of the wrestling audience. Hit the pause button. <laughs> Cringe. It's yeah. Fine. <laughs> but it's fine. Yeah, the gaming puns I could do with that. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. But uh, like, I like yeah, the entrance and the fact that he is a gamer and, you know, all that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, it's cool. Um, so I feel like they should probably stick with TJP for a little while longer. Yeah. But, so I'm going to say TJP is going to win. Okay. But I don't know what happens to Brian Kendrick after he loses. Yeah, that's my thoughts. Um. Uh, so Kendrick goes like if we lo- Kendrick ends up losing, he's like, where does he go? He's like, so oh, it turns out he was a loser after all. Um, so I think Kendrick's going to end up winning it. Okay. Um, so I think he deserves because he's really good. <laughs> he's the best character in the world now. At the minute, I think. I think uh, I, I, I think Kendrick is brilliant. Yeah. Um, the only way I maybe s- I'll hold the title for long, but I think he'll win it ahead of the cell. Okay. Personally. So that takes us on to our next match. Yes. Uh, next one button here would be uh, Roman Reigns versus Rusev. Ray Ray versus Ruru. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a feud that has been going on for far too long. Way too long. Now, WWE sort of this week sort of said this could be the last time that they face each other. I really hope so. God, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, Just because I'm sick of the feud and I think somebody else needs to try and fight for the US title. Yeah, it's in Helen Cell as well, the actual cage uh, thingy. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, this could go on first. Yeah, I'm inspired them, actually. This is like split matches, the cage matches. Yeah, I think there has to be sort of one in the one at the beginning, one in the middle, one at the end. Yeah, that makes sense. Be interesting to see which order they do it in. Uh, yeah, it would be interesting, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think you're right, this will probably go on first. Um, I'm going to say Reigns just because he's not going to lose the title now, is he? Because he's going to end the feud and that's going to be it. Yeah, I'd be oh. very... Yeah, because otherwise, if Rusev wins, that means we have to have this match again. Exactly, yeah. Because... <laughs> Um, see, so yeah, I mean, the, 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 the build up to this has been long and it's been drawn out. Um, I don't think either were actually on Raw this week. Uh, yeah, they weren't. Weird. Fine. Well, yeah, it's fine. I'll, I'll see, I'll see, I don't need to see him again. Because they both had sort of, um, black screen interviews. Oh uh, yeah, that was it. I said, oh, I'm going to beat Rusev and I'm going to win. And um, Rusev was like, I'm going to win as, as well. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm Bulgarian. Bulgaria so. and. Crash. I've got no moustache part of my beard anymore. and <laughs> Match care. Uh, <laughs> and I'm in wrestling pants backstage for no reason. I'm not even wrestling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I look at my hot wife. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think uh, Reigns is going to win, isn't he? Because of course he is. I think Reigns is going to win, yeah. yeah. Um, Do you think the cage will come in to play much this match? I, I think to make each match unique, they're going to have to use the cage in different ways. So oh, yeah. um, there's going to be, there'll be colour in at least one of them. Probably. Someone will go outside. Yeah. Um, the cage will be a factor in in one of, in in all three, but in different ways. Yeah. I, it's difficult to say sort of how. I mean, one might use sort of foreign objects, like in the last one that Roman Reigns had, where he did that giant spear from the apron. Oh yeah. Um, I think Dean and Seth may go out. Or and Seth. Seth and. Owens. Owens, sorry, oh, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> Dean and Seth fought in Hell in a Cell last year. Yeah, so yeah. I, cause I saw that footage of the day and I was like, all oh, right, yeah. Um, it's the, I, I, the cage will come into play in all three, but in different ways because they have to make the each of those matches unique. Yeah. Just for the simple reason that three matches is oversaturation of the Hell in a Cell. Yeah, easily. It's like, we don't need three matches. No. Nope. Like, it's stupid. <laughs> we don't need one, really. Just could do it like once a year, if if that. Yeah, have one. Yeah, like one in the main event for yeah, the yeah. for the championship. That's how it should be. 
Exactly. Or if there's a if there's a feud that needs settling and it's gotten too heated for uh, you know they've been brawling all over the arena or whatever, yeah. they have to be in the hell. They have to be caged up <laughs> and have have it in hell in a cell. But yeah, there's three, and they're going to have to make all three matches different in some way. Otherwise, it's going to be uh, a waste of the Hell in a Cell. Yeah, I agree. But they do have a habit of kind of doing that every week. Oh, it's in the Hell in a Cell, and then Hell in a Cell can barely come to the play it's like a normal match. Yeah, I mean, I, they're, they're ha- <laughs> exactly, and that's what they need to try and avoid it, because yeah. otherwise it renders the Hell in a Cell pointless. What's the point in having a, like, exactly. oh, we're throwing him into the cage. Great. Yeah. You're getting an actual cage match. Exactly. Let's read you two more next match. Uh, the first ever women's Hell in a Cell match, Sasha Banks versus Charlotte. Um, this is an interesting one. Um, they, they really are trying to rush along this, uh, right, what can we make them do next? Yeah, what, can we, what, what first can we do next? What first uh, Hell in a Cell match, first ladder match, last, first, whatever. And uh, yeah, I really liked um, Mick Foley's passionate speech from War, uh, saying, ah, oh, Hell in a Cell changed me and all this and that. Um, that was very cool. Very passionate. Um Maybe care about I don't know maybe care about much more but I, I don't know I liked it it's, yeah I'm <laughs> good context I guess I'm excited for the match mm. um, big time but again it, it is a case of I mean after this what's what's going to happen next <laughs> yeah. because you know there's only so many times you can make history this is the last time I want to see Sasha versus Charlotte this year yeah or maybe for a while because I think other people need a chance so okay. Bailey's gonna. I don't know if Bailey's even fighting Dana Brooke at... Um, Maybe. If we do, I might imagine to be on the pre-show. Yeah, the that's pre-show. a shame. Yeah. Um, it's, it's... This... I think... And I, I think they might um, go for blood in this one. You think so? Yeah. Interesting. They, hey, they're throwing everything else in there. They're making history, <laughs> remember? Yeah. Um, you know, making history every single week. It's... I think... Um, this feud is heated enough and the Hell in a Cell is the right place if they were going to do it to have one of them bleed. Okay. The the, the blood is appearing, quote unquote, accidentally yeah. um, <laughs> more often than not in recent pay-per-views. Yeah. So I, I think um, we might see one of them bleed. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, I think Sasha's got to win, surely. I think she's going to lose the title yet. Not to Charlotte, anyway. But it's just we're going back and forth otherwise and that'd be super weird. Well, again, it goes, but it's like Rusev Reigns, isn't it? It's like if this feud continues, if Charlotte wins, because they've got to fight again. Exactly. And then what do they do? Do they have, what pay-per-views we've got left for the rest of the year? Uh, Is that TLC? Uh, yep, TLC. Right, so we're clearly going to have a women's TLC match. Yeah. That's definitely happening. That'd be cool. Roadblock. That's it. Roadblock? Roadblock, Roadblock, TLC, and Survivor Series. It's not the next, last three. We already had Roadblock this year. I got another one. (laughs) I don't know. Because do you remember, we we had Roadblock before... um, uh, yeah, we did a stream for it. Royal WrestleMania, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just says uh, Hell in a Cell Survivor Series TLC, Roadblock, December question mark. Hmm. Right, okay. Weird. Um, no, I, I think Sasha wins. She has to win because otherwise, again, this feud has to continue. And um, oh, let's see, take right Yeah, so I think Sasha wins, but I think this is. This is the most intriguing out of the three Hell in a Cell matches. Yeah, seriously. Um, yeah, it's actually got a minute. Um, yeah, do you have... Mm, do you, mm, I'm, I'm, I'm debating on whether to not in, to include a uh, bonus bet. Okay. <laughs> of um, whether the ca- how often the cage will come into play during a women's match. But I don't think it will come into play that much. I think it's going to be a normal women's match where one of them occasionally hits the cage. <laughs> I think this will be the one where the cage comes most into play because they've got a point to prove. Okay. We don't know if this is going on last year or not. That's true. There's talk of it. I don't think it will. But the world title should always go on last. Always. Yeah, yeah surely. The, the main championship should always go on last. Not to say that the women's <laughs> yeah. title isn't the main, championship. the main championship, but, you know, as what has been tradition over the course of the, over the last, Jesus Christ, 30 <laughs> years, yeah. the... The men's world heavyweight championship, or the universal championship in this instance, has been the main event. That's been the goal of. That's yeah. been, it's been the main focus on wrestling television. It's not me saying the women's title isn't as important because you know in this day and age, it it really is. That's why it is such a 
a big big deal for this match to be happening. Um, and I'd be more than happy for the match to go on last. Yeah, I'd be. But uh, I agree. I think the Universal title should be the uh, the main event. Yeah, I agree. I think we have to make, we need to make a side bet for WrestleMania next year. I think the main event at WrestleMania is going to be a women's match. I think it's going to be Sasha Banks versus Bailey. The main event? Mm. The first ever women's main event at WrestleMania. WrestleMania 31, 31. I'll take that back. So there's no way that's happening. Not next year. Oh, I, think so. I think it might happen. Okay, so I'm right there now. Uh, yeah. Do so you think they're going to main event the headline and close the show? Yep. Because they're making a big deal about the women's revolution. I think it felt like they're building up to something big. Look, the big, the things can build into WrestleMania, and it's going to be the main event again with this big uh, uh, making history sort of thing that they are <laughs> tend to be doing at the minute. Exactly, yeah. I'd say women's main event. I wouldn't say exactly who, but I think yeah, I think it will be women's main event at WrestleMania 31. 31? It has to be the last sh- match on the card, yeah. closing the show. Closing the show. Okay. Cool. Okay. That's added to the bet- list of bets. But that'll be next year's bets. Uh, oh yeah, it'll be next year's bets. That's fine. I'd do this anyway. Okay. Um, but yeah. Cool. So who do you see Sasha winning this? She has to, right? Yeah, of course. She has to. Do a few to end and we launch someone else. Uh, I hope so. Probably, probably Emma, maybe. Because hmm. she's debuting, debuting, re-debuting soon, isn't she? Might Emma as Lina. Emma Lena. Yeah. Mm. That could be interesting. It will be interesting. Um, more Instagram pictures this week. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Those. Thanks for those. <laughs> I was happy for her to just. She doesn't need to be Emmalina. That sounds no. stupid. Agreed. I like. I like to old evil Emma gimmick. Well, that's fine. I reckon it's going to copy and paste Eve Marie's gimmick onto her because Eve Marie's disappeared. The way she's gone. She got she's suspended. filming a movie at the minute. I think. Oh, she is. Oh, yeah. Okay. Maybe they then. But I, th- I think I thought they might like even Marie get rid of her and just have use her gimmick on Emma because it's a good gimmick. <laughs> it's a really good it's gimmick. The... I think Eve Marie will come back eventually. Yeah, I hope so. I want the gimmick to come back. I'm not too bothered about Eve Marie. But yeah, I mean, with the with the Sasha and Charlotte thing, it needs to end here. <clears throat> it needs to. Um, this needs to be the end of the feud. Yeah, I agree. For now, at least. For now. I mean, by all means, revisit it next year or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think Sasha wins. But uh, this is definitely the most intriguing out of the three cell matches. I agree. Okay. Uh, right. So next match I have on here is uh, New Day. New Day. New Day versus Cesarus. Cesarus and Sheamus. Have you just made that name up, or have they been given that? And that was made up. Okay, <laughs> Cesarus. Cesarus, I like it. Uh, Shamaro. Shamaro, <laughs> even better. <laughs> um, I think I mean I've been very sort of um, vocal with the fact that I think I thought Sheamus and Cesaro were going to win from when they were formed, mm-hmm. but now I've I just I think WWE are hell bent on breaking title records with their current superstars. Yeah. Um, Nikki, obviously, with the Divas, Divas. Uh, Championship. She's obviously the longest reigning Divas champion of all time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I think they're looking to sort of go the same way with uh, New Day. Yeah, probably. Beat Demolition's record of, what is it, 400 days or something? I don't even longer than that. I don't think crazy. Yeah. But that wouldn't surprise me. No, um, I think that's what they want to do. They keep me- They mention it near enough every week. Yeah. You're right. So I think um, I think New Day are going to sort of break that record and go well into December with those titles. Yeah, probably. Um, the fact that uh, Cesaro and Sheamus won on Raw kind of makes you think they're not going to win on the pay per view. Mm. Um, just like giving that giving that win just to show they can work together uh, and get a win. But, but, but what needs to happen if they lose? They need to give us the match six or match seven. I guess it would no, but match. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. a, a proper ending to match seven. They need to give us that match. <laughs> Again. Yeah, I agree. And then have whoever wins go into an actual title shot. Yes. Yeah. Not messing around in the tag team division. Yeah, seriously. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think New Day wins. Yep, agreed. I'll say the same thing. Um, I think it'll be an interesting match. I, I think it will be an interesting good. match. Um, it's been an okay feud. It feels yeah. like something that's been thrown together a little bit, you know, especially sort of... It's been very. Fo- it's been more focused around Cesaro and Sheamus than it has New Day actually defending the titles. Yeah. It's been more, can Cesaro and Sheamus get along? Can they work as a tag team? Can they win the titles as a made-up tag team or whatever? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's, you know, another reason why I think... Um, New Day wins and Cesaro and Sheamus continue their own personal feud. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So the last match I have on here. Uh, it's the main events, hopefully. 
Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins. Well, Seth freaking Rollins. Seth freaking Rollins with his new t-shirt. <clears throat> this will be a good match. Yep. These two have the potential to to completely steal the show. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like 100%. Um providing they are given the freedom to do so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and depending on where they are on the card. Yeah. Saying that, I think I don't even think it'll matter. I think wherever they are on the card, they'll want to steal the show. Oh, yeah. um, Kevin Owens needs a convincing win. Yep, I think yeah, I think you're right. Uh, he needs mm. a he needs a convincing win because he was um, the title was sort of his title reign has been marred a little bit because yeah, because he kind of had it to him, wasn't it? By, by poor booking, I I, I want to say. Yeah, because but, not not so much when he how he won the title, but his title reign since then, yeah. he's been sort of lumbered with Jericho, and Jericho has been the highlight of those <laughs> um, sort of segments every week. With True. the you just made the list, <laughs> yeah, uh, and there's even a T-shirt for it now. Have you seen it? I haven't actually no. Yeah, there's a T-shirt for you just made the list. Oh, nice. <laughs> you just made the list. Um, and you know Kevin Owens has been overshadowed by that a little bit. Um, yeah, a little because bit. you know when I see those segments, I can't wait for Jericho <laughs> to start talking and stuff. Yeah. Um, I was saying this week when he. List, uh, Braun Strowman had the list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sami Zayn's not on the list. <laughs> He's on page four. He's on... <laughs> uh, I love it. Um, so, I mean, I I think Kevin Owens will win and keep the title because I still think, I mean, I'm holding on to this and I'm going to hold on to it until it happens. <laughs> I fully expect to see Triple H. Yeah, I think Triple H's come back this week. But I don't want him to come back at Hell in a Cell because I yeah. think Kevin Owens needs to win clean. Yeah, I think that'd be best. But unless they're going for that sort of JBL esque title run, where something happens during every title defense, where yeah. he keeps it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's been a while since he's Triple H, so it makes sense that he comes back. I don't know if I want to see him. I don't know how it work in the Hell in a Cell. Let's just raise it to Cell and just run underneath. I don't know. Who knows? Interesting one, but I, I'm going to go with Owens. Okay. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's too early to end this feud, yes. I think Seth's got some more, uh, I don't know, more matches in him with Kevin Owens. Um, there's not a lot, not a lot of matches there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I guess it'll feud goes on to feud with Triple H if he does turn up again. So I don't know. But yeah, I think Owens is going to win. Yeah, okay. One way or another, he's going to win. There's not many matches on the card. There's not, is there? There must be more somewhere. There must be... There must be Braun Strowman versus Sami Zayn. Surely. And there must be Bailey versus Dana Brooke because they were featured in two quite prominent segments on Raw this week. Yeah. So should we do guesses for them just in case they are on the pay-per-view? Yeah, might as well. Okay. Why not? Um, see, the Braun Strowman and Sami Zayn thing, I didn't hate as much this week. No, I thought it was fine. Um, because I'm really warming to Braun. Yeah, same. Um, I like what he's doing in the minute. I like his character. I like that they've distanced him completely from the Wyatts. Yeah, yeah. In a sense where there's none of this creepy stuff going on. He is just a, a large gentleman destroying people. Yeah, very much. Um, and I like the Sammy playing the underdog, even though he's the veteran type yeah. type but thing. Yeah, but they always play. He's the underdog from the underground, isn't he? So that's kind of his name. Yeah. So I don't hate it as much as I did last week. As when I saw it last week, I was like, "No, they're just yeah. going to feed Sammy to him." But it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. I like the way they handled it as well. Like Braun, like looked at Sammy, like, "Oh, you're not worthy opponent," and tried to wander off. Yeah, like Sammy attacks Braun, and then he's still, he's kind of catching Sammy and then slamming him into the barricade, and then his opponent's kind of walked off. Thought, "No, not worth my time." Yeah, so and it's then, interesting. I think yeah. I think they probably have that on uh, on the maybe on the pre-show, maybe first match on the of the night. I don't know, maybe. maybe I don't know. I think actually no. I think at, at one of the three Hell in a Cell matches will start the night, but um, I think um, they might have that on there. But who do you think would win that match? Hmm. Uh, I don't know. I'm leaning, I'm leaning towards Sammy, just for it to be like an upset, and then one get like really mad and like, attack him after the match and like, go like a rampage and go crazy strong. I think that. Sammy by count out. Interesting. Okay. Something screwy like that. There's this. There's something about this feud that's got. A, some legs to it. Yeah. I'm intrigued. Um, because I can't see Sammy, I can't see them having, I can't see them having Braun go over, go, uh, um, go down clean. Not just yet. Yeah. But if he wins by, like, so they could have a real brawl. Here, yeah, or maybe yeah. Double count out, something like that. I don't know. So, could they draw? Yeah, could they draw? 
In fact, I'm going to say draw. That's what, okay. that's what I'm going to go for. I'm going to say draw. Interesting. Okay. I'm going to say Sammy. Probably by some sort of shenanigans or uh, cheeky roll up or something. Um, but yeah, I think Sammy's going to win it and that's going to cause Braun to go completely nuts. So attack Sammy or Tomatoes, maybe attack, I don't know, like a timekeeper or someone yeah. <laughs> or the referee. And like, destroy the ring, maybe. I don't know. See, yeah. last, see, last week we hated this. This is, this is, <laughs> wrestling, for, this is wrestling for you. We're fickle. That's yeah. what we are. We're fickle. Yeah, okay, occasionally WWE managed to... Uh, I like, change our mind on things like the man's pull something out and like oh it's actually really interesting <laughs> see among all the garbage and there's a lot of it yeah like there is glimmers of hope in there yeah and like, um, like, last it, week we were sort of really against this yeah this week we're like well oh, this, 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 this should be okay yeah do you think that time we like a few months ago that like, I was going to be too bit into Braun Strowman of all people I'm like no that yeah big guy who does nothing every week with Bryce yeah but the guy, like, the, oh, guy, wow, the big awesome. guy with the Superman tattoo who they <laughs> yeah. want us to believe is some sort of big mystical creature man. Nah. <laughs> yeah. But now we're like, oh, this is, this is good. Yeah. you got an awesome voice as well. It's going to be super deep. Yeah. Oh, it's got a really angry man's voice. Yeah, I love it. Uh, so yeah, good. Okay. Look forward to that. Um, hopefully uh, we see it. <laughs> hopefully it actually happens. Yeah, now, now that we've talked about it, we <laughs> yeah. hope it actually happens. We're just making things up. Yeah. Um, so Bailey and Dana, I've quite enjoyed the build-up to this as well. I think Bailey's going to help Dana progress a little bit here because... Yeah. Um, Dana's obviously pushing a heel character, yeah. and they seem to have distanced her from Charlotte a little. Yes, that's good. They needed that. Um, big horn there. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone's excited. Um, <laughs> but, but no, I, I think... Uh, was that a horny joke you just made? No, it wasn't. Well, I guess it was, but unintentional. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I like Dana as a heel. She's come across good as a heel in the last few weeks. Um I like that she attacks Bailey during the arm wrestling thing. Um, you know, crowd doesn't seem to care. And uh, yeah, I think Bailey's going to end up winning though, just because she's the good guy and they need, they need like a good feel good moment for the baby, I guess. Um, I think Dana's going to win. Okay. The first match. Interesting. Bailey will come out of the feud looking the better of the two, yeah. of course. Okay. Of but I think Dana needs it more than Bailey. Okay. I don't know. Has Bailey really done much in CTV? I think the belief in Bailey is there anyway. Yeah. But she's I don't really won an awful lot. She won that triple threat to like the Monga Dennis match, kind of. Um but that's really what she's done. The thing is though, with Dana, this this feud could be make like make or break for her because True. if you think about it, like the stuff like she obviously was brought in to originally be with Emma. And then unfortunately yeah. Emma got injured and those two would have worked really well together like they did down in NXT. Yeah, yeah. And they were they gave it to Charlotte and it it didn't really work that well. No, uh, Dana made too many fluffs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it didn't really work for what they were trying to go for with Charlotte, I don't think. She tried to fill that Ric Flair role and yeah. it didn't work as well. Nope. But now she's out there on her own. Um, she needs to start picking wins up. Bailey's already established. Uh, Bailey was women's champion in NXT for ages. The sure. fans are firmly behind Bailey, like they would be with Cena. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a t-shirt seller and yeah. a, a headband seller, uh, and all that sort of stuff. And I can't help but think that Dana needs the win more. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, I mean, there'll be there will be people that'll be like, "Oh God, Bailey's come up to the main roster and they're burying her, having her lose to the likes of Dana Brooke." Yeah, but it's be like that. your favourites can't win all the time. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, other people need a chance too. So I think Dana, at this point, needs the victory more than Bailey okay. uh, for now. But like I said, Bailey will come out of the whole feud, um, you know, uh, winning. Yeah, I think but so. Dana That's needs fair. to pick up a W as well. Yeah. I think what might happen is like what I said, same sort of thing I said with Braun. Maybe Bailey will get the win, but then Dana will like attack after the match and I don't know, go nuts again. And that might still make end up making Dana look strong with while still giving Bailey the win. Mm. I don't know. Do wins and losses even matter these days? Not really. <laughs> Not so much. Um, James Ellsworth would beat AJ Styles twice. That's true. Yeah, exactly. So there you go. Not answer that question. <laughs> Speaking of, let's move on to SmackDown. Um, Talk about briefly. Well, so you have you've got Bailey for the win there, yeah? Yeah, I've got Bailey for the win. Okay, so um before we do move on to SmackDown. Okay. On Sunday we will oh, be live on YouTube with our WWE Hell in a Cell live prediction show. Yep. Where we will be playing through the card on WWE two K seventeen. Mm-hmm. Uh we'll be live from about half seven. Yeah. So uh, come along, have a chat with us, have a chat with all of our regular guys who I'm sure will be there to 
joining the wrestling conversation. Yep, yep. Um, it's always a good time, so uh, it'd be cool to see you there. Yeah, absolutely. And now let's move on to SmackDown. Cool, okay. <laughs> right. SmackDown. So, the first match tonight was uh, Kane versus uh, Bray Wyatt. No disqualification, for some reason. Um, yeah, for literally, <laughs> this is just for interference sake. <laughs> Pretty much. Like, without question, it's like, mm, let's have a random no disqualification match that's been announced out of the blue for no reason at all. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Surely enough, Luke Harper interrupted. What? What? He teleported down nowhere, as he does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's magic. It's actual magic. Yeah, it's actual magic, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Kane was getting beaten up. Towards the end of the match, Randy Orton came down to supposedly help. Um, he was getting in position to RKO Bray, and then all of a sudden he RKO Kane. Oh, snap. What a swerve. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I guess. And then later in the night, um, Randy, Randy was like, uh, well, if you can't beat him, join him. So, is he joining the Wyatts? I don't know, maybe. No. Not. No. <laughs> this is all a big setup. You can see it <laughs> yeah, coming from setup. miles away. Yeah. This is a big, massive setup. Also, yep. um, did you, the, the Whites must have a new t shirt out because oh, yeah. you never see Luke Harper in anything but just that vest and jeans. True. At this time, he had uh, the new white t shirt on. Oh, we did? I didn't notice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Good stuff. Got to sell that merch. Got to sell that merch, yeah. That money. The white t shirts are terrible as well. Like, like, Unless you are a hardcore Wyatt fan, yeah. like, you wouldn't buy that t-shirt. It's terrible. Yeah, it's not great. It's like the Randy Orton t-shirts. I think they're awful. Yeah, I wouldn't buy one. Um, so yeah, I don't know. This is a, this is a, a clearly a big setup. Um, lead Bray and Luke Harper into a false sense of security mm-hmm. and strike like a viper. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm snaking you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there next week with a big fake beard. <laughs> and uh, a straw hat <laughs> yeah exactly and a vest <laughs> uh. and some big baggy trousers as well the Bray White some big like Hawaiian looking trousers <laughs> yeah why not <laughs> sure <coughs> right uh, <laughs> also uh, Becky returned back this week back from a mysterious injury um, yeah I don't really know much about it do you no not really I don't really said much about it because if she's had an operation, she's recovered very quick. Yeah, strange. Because honestly, they tried to make out like she was ill. Yeah, it wasn't a wrestling related injury, just a yeah mysterious thing that happened. Yeah, uh, but she, she was wearing right a, she was wearing a shirt that was the same color as her hair. It's true. Well, she was, yeah, a bit, bit of a clash there. But, yeah, uh, good to see her back. Glad she's okay. Thought that wasn't anything serious. Yep. Um, Alexa came down, uh, said some stuff, beat up Becky, uh, said uh, she's got like a. It's got a yellow spine. Uh, must had back surgery to fix the yellow spine or whatever. Ha ha ha. Then uh, after she beat her up, she uh, sprayed like a yellow spine on her back. Yeah. Which, which it's like a it's cool. like a a crap version of the NWO <laughs> yeah, from back say, in the yeah. day. Like a crap uh, NWO. I, I I enjoyed this segment. I thought yeah, I think fine. Alexa is brilliant in that heel role. Yeah, She's she is, so right? good. So good. Like it makes you wonder. Like, why they wasted so much time with her in NXT, chucking her with Blake and Murphy? Yeah, I didn't mind that too well, but they work quite well together. Yeah, they did, but, you know, he didn't really forward Alexa any more, I don't think. Well, he succeeded in turning a heel, which I think is the whole point. Well, yeah, okay, yeah, fair yeah. enough. But, yeah, I like that. I had a soft spot for uh, fairy Alexa Bliss, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The sparkle splash. Yeah, I like to come and skipping down, and I like her music. Like the uh, sparkles you've got her hands. Yeah, like a fairy. <laughs> yeah, I, I liked all of that. I was I was into it. Nice, uh, but I'm I'm fine with the pigtails. We we you know this. Yeah, yeah. The we listeners just, know this. Pigtails is fine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we also had uh, Ascension versus the Hype Bros. Uh, whoever wins gets to be in the uh, Survivor Series match. I hate Mojo Rawley. Like <laughs> yeah, he is the worst. Either. What on earth were them shorts he was wearing this week? Yeah, it looks like he's wearing a John Cena cosplay. Uh, he's like wearing a bloody. A like cap to match, and it's like, come on. Yeah. It's like the other week when he did that dance. Oh, yeah, the stupid hammer time thing. Like, I wanted to go in there and hurt him myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just punch him, he's like, pushing you over. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, <laughs> strong dude. He's like a fly. <laughs> yeah. Flick. <Boom. laughs> um, um, yeah, I hate Mojo Rawley. I think he's terrible. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. It's too hype for me. Um, he doesn't get hype. He stays hype. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know it, bro. But the... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I hate that as well. <laughs> I hate that intro. Um, I hate the music and I hate the Mojo promos. Yeah. And I think Zack Ryder would just be much better on his own. Yeah, you can tell Zack Ryder's like, oh, for God's sake, I hate this Yeah, crap. I think Zack Ryder would prefer to be on his own as well. Yeah, I think he would. Um, Poor Zack. Yeah. That's his WrestleMania won. moment that he gets lumbered with this idiot. Oh, God. Poor Zack. Um, Poor The Ascension as well. 
Yeah, but he's entering Tetsuni. Fine, I like him. Like, yeah. The great NXT. They've got the cool new look and new kind of gimmicky type kind of thing. And they lost again. Good. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Good job. Great. This is all to be part of the Survivor Series tag team. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Um, so because the Hype Bros won and great. they're going to be part of Team SmackDown. Yeah. So is it five tag teams? Because I don't... Because... Or is it a member from... I don't understand. Yeah, I don't really know either. It's a bit weird. Because Survivor Series... Is... five tag teams? Like, they have your That'd be a 10-man tag, wouldn't it? Is that right? Yeah, I guess so. So you've got the Hype Bros. Oh, no, wait. That'd be American a 20-man tag. That can't be right. Usos. Uh, who else? <laughs> who knows? We'll see, I guess. Because if, if you have weird. five, if you have five teams on each side, yeah, that'd be like that's two, twenty men. Yeah, that's too many. I can't have that. Surely not. The whole ring would be covered with people. Bizarre. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> next match. We'll find out soon, hopefully. Uh, next match. Oh, it wasn't a really match. It was. Uh, oh no, it was just a random thing. We really had to talk about that. Uh, Nikki versus Natalia. Uh, whoever wins gets a captain the Survivor Series team for the ladies and whoever loses is out. Uh, it was an okay match. Yeah. It was fine. Um, Nikki ended up winning with the SDF um, which actually did better than Cena I thought because she actually gets a... Yeah, she looked like she was her. really going for it. Yeah, yeah. But Cena kind of squashes the person's head. She actually puts her arm under the neck which I thought looked cooler. Cena doesn't really do anything. It's like he's grabbing air. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Um, but that was cool. Good Cena moving the Arsenal. Um... And then Commander attacked her after the match, of course, because that's what she does. Yep. We'll get that feud on even longer, which is fine. Yeah, it's been good. Again, it's like um, Alexa. Uh, I think Carmella's embraced that heel role very well. Yeah, yeah. Um, she did the You Can't See Me after the match. So obviously, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> it, it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fine. <laughs> uh, they've got to win this feud. <clears throat> before the Survivor Series. Yeah. Um, like we said last week, maybe they'll have like a an episode of SmackDown where it's sort of like a pay-per-view because... Yeah, I think that um, the November 8th Glasgow SmackDown is going to be that thing. You think? Because, yeah, they have the women's title match there. I think they announced something else there as well. So okay. I think that'll be, that'll be the time to do it. Yeah, but that makes sense because then it's sort of two weeks away from Survivor Series. So that would... Yeah. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, so they had another match with the Spirit Squad who was still around somehow. Um, I'm telling you, man. I, and I, <laughs> did I did I not say last week yep. that they were going to go for the tag team titles? Yep, said they called it. Um, they had, there was a promo with the Miz and stuff, but I skipped because I was running out of time. Yeah, it was boring. Yeah, yeah, it's done. Um, but yeah, um, once again, Rhino ended up winning with the spear. See the pattern here. Um, yeah, and it also before the match, like Heath didn't want the match. Oh yeah, I like he was worried about again. losing. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you had the same promo between Ziggler and Miz. Um, this is why I didn't want Ziggler to win the championship because right, okay. I knew this would carry on if Miz won we could all enjoy our lives with Miz <laughs> as the champion and him feuding with somebody else yeah, yeah. now we've got Miz versus Ziggler again, again. Yeah. Yeah, um, and the spirit squad are still around like you said yeah. Um, but yeah the, it, before the match Heath didn't want the match okay. he says oh we can't do it tonight or he he's just bought timeshare. He's bought shares in Puerto Rico, is what he said. Right, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, nice. and then Rhino said you're on, and they had the match. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah. PSG's a match. I thought I was pleasantly uh, surprised by the uh, Spirit Squad. Still good wrestlers, as it turns out. See, I told you. Yeah, you tell you right. Yeah, well done. And uh, yeah, cool ending as well. Uh, I think one of the Spirit Squad was chasing Heath, and then he ducked out the ring, and then Rhino came in and caught him, and that was super cool. Uh, and won the match. Good stuff. Yeah. They really talked up Kenny as well. Yeah. Um, during the match. I think it was Kenny. To be honest, I was watching up during the match. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting my chores done early today. Yeah. Um, and I think it was Kenny they were talking about because, you know, he was the one. He had he actually had some sort of singles career yeah. um, after the after the Spirit Squad sort of uh, disbanded. It's true. Kenny Dykstra took the surname of, of a famous baseball player, apparently. Oh, okay. Neat. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, so we just to our main event, which I thought was really good. Uh, AJ Styles versus Dean Ambrose. This came around really quick. I didn't yeah. realise this was going to be the main event because I feel like SmackDown yeah. just passed me by this week. Yeah, me too. I thought, oh, that's um, the end. Then I, when I pressed <laughs> on the Sky thing to see how long it was left, it was like 10 minutes. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's the end then. Yeah. The main event. Um, yeah, so Dean won this match. He would get a title shot uh, down the line, which he didn't. He lost. Um, because it was a great match. Uh, lots of impressive stuff, as it always is, with AJ and Dean. Nope. Turn these off. Keep going. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, so El- uh, Ellsworth is still there. He was at ringside 
uh, cheering on Dean. And uh, during the match, AJ attacked Elder with an aggressive looking drop kick through the ropes to the outside, landing on his feet, which looked awesome. Um, but then uh, later on, as AJ was outside, James Ellsworth um, uh, got pissed off and super kicked him in the face. And he turned around and the ref was staying right at him. And he called with a bell and disqualified. Do you mean the no chin music? No chin music, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, then he got disqualified, which means no title drop for him. And Good! Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. It's cool. I like it. I like AJ it. needs to move on now to someone else. Yeah, I agree. Like, because they've done the AJ... Dean feud, and now it's time for Dean and Cena to sort of re- wherever Cena's gone. Um, now AJ needs to focus on somebody else, and there's plenty of talent on SmackDown that yeah. wasn't even around. That's what's good about SmackDown. You don't see everyone every week. It's like NXT. Yeah, that's true. Because it's a much shorter show. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah. I like the match. I thought it was fine. Mm-hmm. Um, AJ Styles is brilliant. Yep. Um, I. As much as I'm sick of seeing James Ellsworth, um, I'm fine with him playing this sort of weird supporting jobber role that he's playing at the minute. Yeah, I like it. Um, I, I don't think he'd be around for much longer. I don't know. There's a movie saying that he might have a full contract coming soon. Yeah, but why? Uh, what's he gonna? What, what's he actually gonna do? But they, what are they gonna do? Put the IC title on him? No, I think it's be like a like a comedy kind of kind of thing. I feel like we're doing now. I imagine. I'm fine with it. Are you fine with it? I'm fine with it. Okay. But I like I liked how, he, how how he played into this match, uh, costing Dean the win, and Dean was obviously there. Then looked at socks. Well, it's it's played well into the storyline, yeah. um, so it does sort of make sense. And yeah. I, I I did sort of see it coming, like uh, I thought, like when he was sort of begging Dean backstage during the course of the night to sort of have him uh, come out with him and support him. Yeah. I sort of knew at that point that he would end up costing him the the match in some way. Um, but you know, I'm fine with it. Maybe we'll see Dean Ambrose versus James Ellsworth next week. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe this is what will lead to Cena coming back, defending James Ellsworth, and then that feud picks up. Maybe. Yeah. We'll see. I've noticed you've got your uh, WWE encyclopedia there. Yeah, there's a new segment on the uh, the Sunny and Finn show. All right, okay. Starting from this week. <laughs> We're going to sort of work on a Sesame Street type theme. <laughs> so, okay. Uh what we're going to do is we're going to pick a letter and we're going to pick something horrendously obscure out of the WWE encyclopedia based on that letter. Right, okay. So, um, we'll start at the, at the very beginning. Sure. So, this week's Sunny and Finn show is brought to you by the letter A. <laughs> Yay. Let's, let's go sk- skimming through here. So a is for Apple. Oh. Uh, hey. There's so much garbage in this book, it's unreal. Who's that? Okay. Andre the Giant. Andy Levine. Who? I don't know, yeah. Was he the Tough Enough guy? He got fired after like winning. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was him, yeah. Alright, let's pick something obscure. Armando out. Estrada, remember him? I he's, do. He's okay, here's <laughs> one. Um Avatar. Avatar, okay. Okay. The enigmatic competitor combined martial arts with high-flying moves and made his debut on Monday Night Raw in October 1995. Unlike most masked superstars, he didn't put on a mask until he was in the ring and removed it after a victory. His version of the the frog splash was a bit different. To begin, he'd stand on the sternum of his fallen opponent, jump from their body and land on them with the body splash. Right, okay. Okay. So what's what's he like? Standing on and then... And jumping up and then landing on the stomach. Huh. That's a Weird. version of a frog splash. Apparently so. Right. Sounds painful. That would hurt way more than just jumping off him, but uh, way more than a frog splash. I'd imagine. <laughs> Avatar became a fan favorite as he battled villains like Psycho Sid, Isaac Yankum, DDS, <laughs> Kane, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Brooklyn Brawler, and Bradshaw during his stay in WWE. He also formed an exciting wow. tag team with fellow aerialist Aldo Montoya. You know the one. Just incredible. Ah, okay. Cool. Cool. Okay. By March 1997, Avatar vanished from WWE. Even if it was only for a brief period of time, Avatar showcased his talents where the only select few are given the opportunity. <laughs> right. I've never heard of him. <laughs> this week's episode of the Sunny and Finn Show was brought to you by the letter A. Thank you, Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> More WWE encyclopedia on next week's show. <laughs> hey. I'm excited. <laughs> there's some obscure stuff in there I thought of this the other day I was thinking there's some such weird things in here that we need to address them yeah that's a good one I like it Avatar is strange yeah there's been, like Aldo Montoya was strange enough like just it's, it is just incredible underneath all that yeah alright very strange 
Drink cool. <laughs> yeah. Guys, this has been the Sunny and Finn Show, episode number 36. Hey. Please subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, follow us on SoundCloud, on Stitcher, on Podcast Addict, or anywhere else that you happen to listen to podcasts. Mm-hmm. We are everywhere. Everywhere. Pretty much. Please go subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are three away from 100, and then we'll Very be close. able to give you a URL every week <laughs> on the podcast Yay. instead of... Please go type in Sunny and Finn on <laughs> yeah. YouTube and you'll find us. There's a link in the description. Find it. So please do that. Join us this coming Sunday for our Hell in a Cell live prediction show mm-hmm. while we will be playing through the card on WWE 2K17. Yep. Um, that's pretty much it for this week. Think so. Okay. Well, I'm Sunny. I'm Finn. And we'll speak to you next week, guys. Take care. Thanks Goodbye. So Goodbye.